If the holy Ganges is not in existence in the future, the entire world will seem like it has become an orphan. The Swami's trove of ice scapes documents 50 years of change to this magnificent glacier. Now, NASA satellite imagery confirms the rate of loss. Side by side, the high and low tech images tell a similar story, one that spells danger for the future. This was all glacier once, before it started shrinking 30 meters a year. Just a century ago, this stone marked the edge of the ice field that has retreated high up the mountain. If the world warms five degrees, two massive uninhabitable zones spread into once temperate regions of the northern and southern hemispheres. Snowpack and aquifers that feed the world's great cities, Los Angeles, Cairo, Lima, Bombay, are drying out. Climate refugees number in the hundreds of millions. This could be our world plus five degrees. If we allow global warming to take off that far, I really do see a situation where we have uh, conflict across vast areas of the globe as the people who remain and the people who survive fight it out with each other for what remains of the world's resources. And it can get even worse. If the world warms by six degrees, from a distance, the oceans may appear bright blue, but they are marine wastelands. Deserts march across continents like conquering armies. Natural disasters become common events. Some of the world's great cities are flooded and abandoned. This could be our world plus six degrees. Warmings of six degrees over longer time periods have been associated with some of the most devastating mass extinctions which have ever taken place. So it's certainly fair to assume that if temperatures soar by six degrees within less than a century, that we're going to face nothing less than a global wipeout. Six degrees of warming has been called the doomsday scenario our lives would never be the same again. But it's not all doom and gloom yet. Most experts believe we can awaken from the nightmare. Right now, the average temperature has only risen 0.8 degrees Celsius. But we don't have much time. We're talking about turning around the energy supply for most of humanity within the space of a decade. For anyone looking for solutions, there's no place like home. This is the Cohen residence, a pleasant three bedroom in Snowmass, Colorado. But lurking beneath the surface, an energy eating monster. Many homes waste more energy than they use. A team of eco-detectives is investigating the Cohen house for crimes against the climate. So this innocent looking thing here, when it is on, eats a whole lot of money. When I feel this much cold on the outside of the freezer, I know that the, the insulation is really not as thick as we would, as we would like. So oh, what have we here? Climate change is a problem we don't need to have, and it's cheaper not to. For Amory Lovins, solutions start with efficiency. Reducing the use of energy that produces CO2 emissions. Do you see that little red light 
down the corner? Sure. Yes. And this whole entertainment center goes through one plug, so I'm going to plug it in through the meter now. If you have all kinds of appliances, you know, your TV, your VCR, your DVD, et cetera, that have that little light on, yes. they're using electricity. It's called vampire loads. 109 watts. Almost 60 bucks a year just <clears throat> sitting there turned off. Lovins doesn't just talk the talk. He lives in a house he designed without a furnace in Aspen, Colorado, where temperatures in winter routinely drop below negative 17 Celsius. We're at 7,100 feet here. It can go to minus 47F, get frost any day of the year, and we can get 39 days of continuous midwinter cloud. Lovins' house is a mix of high technology and homespun common sense. Solar units on the roof produce more electricity than the house uses. The entire house runs on just 120 watts, slightly more than a single light bulb. Energy efficiency is the biggest, fastest, cheapest way to solve the climate problem, to save money, and to make a safer, richer, fairer, cooler world. Next to our homes, the second largest source of emissions we're responsible for is parked right outside. Cars produce nearly 20% of global greenhouse gases. To keep warming below the critical two degree threshold, we need to cut 7 billion tons of greenhouse gas emissions every year, doubling the average fuel efficiency of all cars from 25 kilometers per gallon to 50 would save 1 billion tons. But we would still need to cut billions more from our carbon footprint to stay on the safe side of plus two degrees. We have an arsenal of solutions already. It's going to be solar, and it's going to be wind, and it's going to be tidal power, and it's going to be thermal power. All of these different things working together actually give us a pretty good ability to get away from the fossil fuel economy. The ultimate answer may be just over the horizon. But the problem continues to grow. With each passing year, we consume more energy. The future will test the best minds in science. An international team of physicists in England has already started attempting the mother of all technological solutions, nuclear fusion. They're building a fusion reactor modeled on the single best power plant in the solar system, the sun. Harnessing that same power could mean a virtually limitless and self-sustaining source of energy without producing any greenhouse gases. This energy lights up the universe, powers all most of the stars in the universe. So what we're trying to do here is to replicate the same process on Earth and use this amount of energy to produce electricity. It won't be easy. The core of the reactor will be nearly 10 times hotter than the sun. A powerful magnetic field contains the super hot plasma and prevents it from melting through the reactor's walls. Even if it works and there's no guarantee, the reactor won't produce commercial electricity for at least another 30 years. As ambitious as it may be, Fusion may appear relatively down to Earth. Imagine outer space filled with a cosmic fleet of mirrors. One current research project estimates that one million mirrors, each about three feet across, could block out enough of the sun's heat to lower the Earth's temperature. It's no good sitting around hoping that someone's going to invent some fantastical new source of free energy. The reality is we have to deal with what we've got, and we have to do it within 10 years. <laughs>